This isn't just an update. It's a game changer for architectural visualization. DeFi is rapidly reshaping the architectural visualization game. With its AI integration, seamless usability, and affordable pricing, it has become a go-to tool for designers worldwide. Now with the release of version 2.11, they've taken things up a notch. Packed with new features and deeper AI integration, this update is something you cannot afford to miss. I have received the beta version of this update from DeFi and I'm really excited to share them with you. So in this video, let's jump in to see all the major features and updates and see how they can be used. Before we begin, make sure you subscribe so we can create more amazing content like this. I'm Salman, an architect and an investigator, so let's jump into it. To get started, you can download the latest versions launcher from the link in the description. This post on the DeFi forum gives us a complete list of all the major updates of the latest version, so we'll take a look at the most highlighted ones. The launcher by itself is a new update in the latest version. The launcher has a new logo, UI and branding, and this gives us all the latest files, versions, and all the resources that you need are readily available in the launcher. The first tool we look at is called DeFi Agent and it's located on the top left. Choose that and this is going to open an AI agent pop-up and this works just like ChatGPT. We can use it for smart planting which automatically generates specific plant groups based on your site's location and context. The models that are created using smart planting can further be exported using the plant schedule. This can also be used as an AI bot to ask questions related to DeFi, rendering or visualization. For instance, let's ask, what are the basic system requirements of DeFi? This will give us the answer right inside the DeFi platform and we don't have to switch between Google and other forums to get the solution. And this also continues the answer just like ChatGPT and you can ask further questions related to it. Let's see how the smart planting works. We have three examples of prompt parameters here. One with the naturalistic flower border, seasonal flower bed, and a minimalist floral less garden. Let's choose the first one. And this gives us the prompt parameter in the chat box. As you can see, certain parameters are highlighted like the location, colors, and weather. We can change them according to our site and location. Click enter and this will generate a table with all the plants, their nature, and the colors. You can choose the export option and this table gets exported as an Excel file. The Auto Scatter option allows us to choose specific areas to create a scatter using the plants in this table. You can choose a material or a model and this scatter will get added to it. If the models are not downloaded yet, this will automatically download it and add it to the scatter. The advantage of having it in a scatter group is that we can adjust them and make changes whenever we want. Let's try adding the same scatter on this larger plane and see how it looks. Doing this manually is going to be extremely time consuming and this is exactly where this tool stands out. This tool is going to be a game changer for landscape architects worldwide. The next tool we look at is called AI Material Snap and it not just creates flat textures but creates complete PBR materials with diffusion and displacement. Head over to Assets materials and we have the AI materials map on the right. In this window, we can add a reference image from a local drive and these selection tools will bake the image into different components. We can select the material of each element individually and the generate option right here will create a seamless texture using this reference. Once created, we have the option to apply it into a model. We can also save it to a local material folder and right below, we have recommendations from existing material library that are similar to the texture that we created. This tool will save us a ton of time and we don't have to create textures manually or look for them on the internet. The next time a client sends us the reference texture, we can use the same inside the model. The AI Atmosphere Match is set to be enhanced in this version. Choose AI Atmosphere Match on the top right and choose Snap Current View. In this version, we are given reference images which are ideally HDRI settings which we can use to transfer the style into a model. You can choose between them or pick random images and D5 is going to give you a lot of options to choose from. I like this nice sunset view. Click generate and this will download and migrate the style to the current view that we selected. We can play around with the strength of the atmosphere match 
And since this is an HDRI, we can rotate it to the best angle that we prefer. Similarly, we can work around with any reference image or from any image from the local drive to achieve the exact results that we want. The AI post-processing was a great deal on the previous versions and in this one, they have improved it even further. Let's render a view and this will open the AI post-processing. We have the standard AI enhancer, but in this version, we have the option to adjust the enhancement weight and the texture strength. This can be useful when we don't want AI to make a lot of adjustments in the textures of the model. Under the in-painting category, we have a new tool called AI Intelligent Redrawing. This can again be customized and it produces results with enhancements in textures, depth and quality. We also have the AI Style Transfer and inside the Realistic tab, we have the option to change the climate of the present view. Let's change it into a winter view and see what it creates. Here's the result from the AI Intelligent Redraw and it seems to have substantially improved the depth of the materials. In case of style transfer, it does make a few changes in the architectural elements of the scene, but it's still a great output to work with. Here are more examples of this AI enhancement tools. DeFi version 2.11 has upgraded the real-time path tracing. Real-time path tracing is basically a technique which stimulates how light interacts with different surfaces in a scene. This technique is responsible for making a scene realistic and having more realistic shadows and illumination. This is very clearly visible in this specific scene right here, which has a lot of lighting and illumination. As we scroll across the scene, we can notice that the lighting and illumination stays as it is and we're looking at all the lighting and illumination in real time. You might have noticed in other softwares that the lighting takes a little while to buffer and give us a realistic output. Whereas in this case, no matter how fast we scroll, we are still able to see all the illumination in real time. We also have an option inside the display tab to customize the settings of the display. Adjusting the GI strength and reflection will ultimately affect how we're looking at the model and it stays closer to the output that we're rendering. Previously, under the camera settings, we had the perspective view and the two-point perspective view. Right now, we have another option called parallel and this will give us the much-needed orthographic views in DeFi. This feature did exist in a lot of other rendering platforms and right now, it's been updated in the new version of DeFi. You can pan between the view in parallel projection and we also have the isometric option which opens a wide range of possibilities for diagramming and concept design. Choosing the isometric option when in perspective view will automatically switch the model to parallel projection. Furthermore, we have the align tool. This will align the view towards any surface that we select in the model. This can be a quick way to juggle between multiple views and angles while working on larger models. The latest version has introduced the orbit center icon in the orbit mode. While we are in the orbit mode, we can use the right mouse button and the orbit icon is initiated. We can use this to rotate across the model while the orbit icon being the center of the camera while rotating. In the previous version, we either had to turn off or turn on the auto exposure. Whereas now, we have a new setting called Compensation Auto. This will allow us to adjust the exposure of the image and this actually makes the exposure settings a lot more usable than the previous versions. We now have a new disk light in the settings. Head over to the lights option on top and we have the disk light. This is essentially a disk of light that gives you a soft throw and appears a lot more pleasing. This can be used in cases where we previously used spotlights and this actually makes a great difference. We can assign IES settings to these and adjust the directions just like the other lights. Here's the difference between the new disk light and the previously used spotlight.
choose the leaf option and we have the advanced brush. This will essentially create a scatter settings and you can use it when you don't want to apply scatter to a material or a model. Once you draw with this brush, you can either use your scatter presets or you can pick individual models to add into the scatter group. You can also edit the scatter and use the eraser tool just in case you want to remove specific areas in the scatter. Once again, the brush tool can be used to add more area to the scatter and the models are regenerated. This is indeed a very significant update and is a very useful tool for adding landscapes or elements using scatter. Inside the path tool, we now have the custom path tool. This can create a path and ideally add anything to it. You can add furnitures, trees, elements or anything you can think of. In this case, let's add a few interior parallax. Now since this is a path, we can select a parallax, increase the density and spacing and we can essentially start placing them inside the building. Choose Ctrl D to create a copy and we can place them vertically all over the building. In case you want to edit and make a few changes, it's extremely easy to remove a parallax and replace it with another one. So the custom path tool can be of great use in modeling. I know I'm not the only one to have a lot of scenes in the scene list and always struggle to find the right one. This is now sorted in the new version. The scenes can now be added into groups, making them extremely easy to keep them organized. You can add your scenes into interiors, exteriors, drafts and so much more. The new version also allows a great range of file compatibility. Apart from these, we have the new edge division, which can precisely divide a scatter area. The camera target tool can lock on one specific area in the scene while creating a video. We have enhanced controls on the IES lights and the indicators are visible on the viewport. The DeFi scene can be shared as a model to be viewed from anywhere with the XR tool. The CCM integration syncs the real-world GIS data and brings in the city context around your site for increased accuracy. That's quite a lot to be explained in one single video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a detailed video on any of these specific topics. So that was it from the new features of T5 version 2.11. Comment down below which of these you found the most interesting. Check out the link in the description to get started with T5 and make sure to avail your 5% discount from the links. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this to be helpful. You can follow me on Instagram and the handle is right here. I'll see you soon.